Now let me turn to race-based pharmaceuticals. The FDA recently approved the first race-based drug, a drug called Bidil that uh, is supposed to treat heart failure specifically in African Americans. It is a drug for African Americans and only African Americans. The theory behind Bidil is that the reason for higher mortality rates among black heart patients lies in biological or genetic differences among the races, either in the reason for getting heart disease or the reason for responding differently to different medications for heart disease. All right, so do you get it? The idea is black people, uh, before genetic reasons, uh, experience heart disease differently or respond differently to medications. And that's the reason why blacks die at a higher rate from heart disease than whites do. Now, uh, there's a big difference between using race as a biological category to address racial disparities that, at, I, I'm sorry, as a biological category to trace uh, racial inequities in health to genetic variation versus using race as a political category to address racial disparities that stem from social and economic causes, right? Do we use race, do we continue to use race uh, as a category in our work? Uh, well, there's a difference between saying, yes, we should use race because there is a biological basis for it and we can trace racial inequities to genetics versus saying, yes, we should continue to use race as a political or social category because we see continuing effects of racism uh, in racial differences in uh, health, for example, education. We can go down the list, just about every category. Uh, but America seems to be going in precisely the wrong direction, taking precisely the wrong course. While conservatives and some liberals argue that it's time for a colorblind approach to social issues, ignoring the impact of racism, many genetic scientists, including the makers of Bidel, are promoting the idea that race really does have a scientific basis in biology. Uh, this idea, some people say, well, I thought the Human Genome Project found that uh, human beings were 99% the same uh, genetically. Well, yeah, but there's a whole lot of scientists looking at that 1% to explain uh, all sorts of social differences between uh, the races. Race-based pharmaceuticals discount the importance of environmental factors in explaining differences in black and white patients' experience of disease to market a technological fix based on supposed genetic differences. Besides resuscitating the fallacy that biological races have any scientific validity, there are two other dangers in this kind, or at least two others, in this kind of race-based genetic research. First, it diverts resources away from finding and addressing the socioeconomic causes of health disparities. And I would wager any scientist here that after another decade of the most complex and well-financed research into the genetic basis of disease, we'll have to conclude that black people's health, indeed everyone's health, would improve far more by universalizing health care, equalizing the education system, cleaning up the environment, and reducing poverty. The future of most black children, and again I would say all children in America, hinges on the kind of society they're born into, not the genetic traits they're born with. Another problem is that although some see Bidil and drugs like it as improving medical care for blacks, these pharmaceuticals can also serve as a perverse justification for denying better therapies for blacks and other disadvantaged groups while reserving the superior therapies for white patients explicitly, explicitly on the basis of race. It makes it fine to say, we're going to give you this treatment because you're white and this treatment because you're black. And you really have to convince me that, <laughs> that the, um, 
the best treat, who's getting the better treatment. Now, the argument is, well, it's because of genetic differences. But consider how Bidel won FDA approval. Law professor Jonathan Kahn has chronicled that it was the FDA's initial denial of approval to Bidel when it was a raceless drug that led its creator to reconceptualize the drug as one for blacks, which then enabled it not only to get the FDA's blessing, but also to raise venture capital, to receive a lucrative patent, and to launch a successful marketing campaign. Meanwhile, Bidel became the solution to, to the finding that blacks respond less well than whites to ACE inhibitors, which continue to be the therapy of choice for white patients. And this will probably lead to a lessening of research into why aren't blacks responding better to ACE inhibitors. Government agencies that finance and improve this race-based research should scrutinize far more the claims that there is a biological basis for the racial categories that researchers use. Progressives must seek ways, either through regulation or education, to avoid the potential of reproductive genetics, race-based genetic research, and other links between race and the biotech agenda to reinscribe the genetic definition of race and the biological explanation of racial inequities. Collective struggles to redress the social reasons for infertility and poor health are impeded by the availability of technologies to, to the most privileged who can turn to these fixes rather than working together for more broad-based solutions. We can't let biotech advances sidetrack movements for social change that are far more critical to racial justice than tinkering with our genes. Thank you.